Hi guys, welcome to another Shouting Electronics. This time I'm outside at an electric fence. As you can see, the electric fence is not working. There seems to be a problem with the energizer and a lot of work needs to be done to sort out the wiring that's been in a state of neglect. So let me just take you for a walk along this part of the fence line and then we will take a look at what's happening with the energizer. Okay, I'm just taking you along the fence line as stable as I can. Okay, as you can see over here, I don't know if you can see it too clearly, we've got a strand hanging down over here. That just has come off that insulator, so that should be an easy fix. And we're carrying along the fence. Okay, here's another section that needs quite a bit of work because there's wires that popped off the insulators again and uh, could be shorting out to the bobbin on that side over there or to each other. And we carry along here and I'm not going to go in that corner now but there's more damage to the fence lines over there and also further up the property all the way around the back. So as you can see the first job really is to check what's wrong with the energizer. Once we get that up and running we can work on section by section of the fence and try to get it going. So now let me take you inside to where the energizer is and we can take a look. Okay so here we have the electric fence energizer which actually has a very dim power light on you can barely see it unless the room is totally dark and we've got I believe a surge protector here to protect what's going into the fence energizer and then in good old South African illegal fashion the fence is wired straight into the back of the socket so there's no way to switch this energizer off with these energizers also you can use a magnet to switch them on and off but as you see i'm holding the magnets over where the reed switch is inside and i'm not getting any activation so let's pop the cover okay so i've got the let me, let me take energizer opened over here. And as you can see, we have got a very dim power light. I don't know if you can see that. There's also a siren. I forgot to mention that if the fence detects an alarm, the siren will set off. And we've got our battery on top, our back, battery backup. So I think the first thing we'll do is let's test. It really looks like we've got very low power coming into this thing. Maybe a problem with the power supply because we've got that dim power light on. What we'll do, you'll see what the battery situation is. Now this hasn't been running for two months, so the battery could be had it. So we're just gonna yeah, we check voltage just first. Okay, volts DC. And check in the voltage on the battery. 13 volts DC. Okay, let's disconnect the battery terminal and let's see. Okay, battery says 13.8 volts. Let me check the charging output. 13.8. So that that looks like it's okay. It looks like the charging circuit is fine. The power supply circuit. So We'll also just check the fuses now as well. For that, I'll have to switch off the mains because, the, like I said, I did South African style. Okay, that's beeping here in the background just so UPS is charging here. Yeah? Okay, so let's pull the supply fuse. Which should also be good. Supply fuse is good, battery fuse is good, auxiliary fuse is good. Over here is your little reed switch that that magnet will activate. Okay, so it looks like we got power, the board does charging. I do see a soil in capacitor over here, which we'll check out on the bench later. 
Okay, so we do have our supply coming in. We do have our voltage out to supply the battery. Let's see. Battery has got some power, so that's good. So it looks like the problem could be on this board here. It's not energizing or basically anything. So let's pull it off and check for it's not supposed to be right. It's nice about being able to pull the board out like this. You can just leave all these fence wires connected and you don't have to worry about getting them in the wrong place. Okay, so got that, got the board. Basically, we need to get the power light nice and bright, and then we can take it from there. Next step, we got to the lab. Okay. So now we've got the Energizer PC board in the lab here. I noticed this capacitor is bowed on top, or domed on top there. The, it's actually pushed out from high pressure, and looks a bit swollen over here. So we are definitely going to replace that capacitor. Okay, so I have pulled out those two faulty capacitors. There are only one similar, or would be these ones. Well, the one faulty one suspects were 16 mic, uh, 16 volt 470 mic. I've got 35 volt 470 mic. Hope it's not going to cause a clearance issue. It shouldn't. Okay, they're over there, and I've put them both in. So let's power the board up now and see what happens just off battery. Hey, there we get some nice bright lights there now. That's nice. Of course, we won't get that power on light because we don't have enough power. And also, you see the safety switch here? That's to stop it from operating when the cover's open. But you can just either push it in, which I don't want to stick my finger behind here. We'll just sort out this little bypass switch here. When we short out the bypass switch, it should come to life. Okay, so that's more life than we had when it was downstairs. So I think that could have been the problem. Just those capacitors on the side, that bulging cap. So I think we're going to go back downstairs, put it in, cross thumbs and hope for the best. Oh, maybe I should switch off the camera instead of the soldering iron. Okay, we're back in the garage. Let's get rid of the lizard eggs in there. Mm, tastes like lizard. Okay, now we have to make sure that those two little um, lugs over there mate up to these two. That I believe goes to a transformer in here for the output. There, those capacitors go there. With this safety switch not being pushed in and the jump bypass jumper not being on, this thing shouldn't try to get out any voltage. Got a brighter power light here now. Can you see that? So those capacitors were, or well, that capacitor, we don't know if both of them were bad, was causing a problem. Problem with the power going to the circuit, not the charging voltage. Okay, so now we've got that in place. Okay. Of course, we've got faults on the fence wire, so the thing is going to make it give us a little alarm when we test it. Let's test it. Okay, so we do have pulsing going on here. Yeah? Let's see if the magnet turns it off. Okay, let's close. Okay, looking here. They're just using two wires. One with the energizer an out and a return. So they're not using ground loop monitoring. So 
Let's see here. Let's have the search and protect that thing. Now let's open this box and see what's going on here. Just four terminals. Five terminals. One of them must be a ground line. Looks like we've actually added some arc into the wall there. Okay, so this is the front line. That's the back line. Back line. So if I take the Take this out here. Should sense a fault on the fence now. See, we're not getting any return indication, and we've got a fence along. Okay, so let's get the energizer cover on. So we've got no return here. Okay, so if I short out the out of the energizer and the return, just like that, it should see that the fence is intact and it should work. So let's give it a shot. I guess the thing to actually do before I reconnect the siren is also want to put a remote receiver in here so I can switch on and off as I'm working on the fence line. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the return, which is like an earth here, and I'm already seeing a spark. Okay, so energizer is giving us output. It's giving us quite a mean output as you can see. I'm trying I'm out of this block. Looks pretty impressive. Okay, so I've taken a remote receiver. Okay, as you can see, I've hooked it up to the battery because there's no terminal blocks for the keypad output. Also, I picked up power from the keypad output. So the receiver gets its power from the battery. So normally, open contacts go into where that bridge was on the remote switch input. So now I need to change this to be a latch. So when I turn it on, by using the remote, you see it tries to. Okay, well, it's switched off now. Try again. Now it's trying to, but it's flashing because the lid is open. So, remote receiver is in place now. Okay, so we are getting pulsing now. I guess we have to go check the fence again now. Okay, so I have got the electric fence energizer running. I've one, made one or two changes. I've noticed previously they didn't have an earth wire from the fence line to the energizer, which means it was less effective not giving out so much of a jolt. So I cut these wires a bit shorter, used a bit to make an earth line. Now let's go look at the work that I did actually on the fence wire. Okay, just before I show you the work that I've done to the fence line, just a bit of a disclaimer, this is not a customer's house. This is a house that I'm busy renting and with the current unrest in the country I decided I needed to get a bit more security up and running in addition to the razor wire that's around here. So this system was here. I've just done a few temporary type connections and then okay once this 
once this whole situation is over, basically we'll possibly redo the fence, put an extra line in because you really need the six lines to give you proper grounding and proper sensing if anyone tampers with the loop or shorts out the loop. So like I said, this is just a thing for now for security. Okay, so as you can see, I went and traced out their wires, figuring out which is the earth, which is the fence out, which is a fence return. And I've just connected it up like that. So I've got the grounds looping over there and to the top strand. And then this is the uh, in from the inner drives over here. I must be careful not to touch it. It goes through this loop, comes out the top here, then goes through to this side of the fence. Okay, you can see our ground is on the bottom line third line and fifth line and then our signal or power from the other side comes in here goes through the fence loops all the way back down here and goes back to the energizer but what i did also and if you can see this i put a loop here to this on top of the gate so just when the gate is closed or open that wire just slides along for now keeps the top of the gate energized just go for a walk along the fence now I did a bit of clean up removing everything that was in the way of the that was everything that was jammed into the fence causing a short and causing wires to be ripped out in that all the way along here cleaned up a bit over here there was a branch that had gotten so tangled and it stretched all the fence lines so we cut back and retensioned as much as we can until we put more tensioners in. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, repair video and basically just going through this electric fence, fixing the energizer and doing some work on the strands. I didn't show much of the work on the strands because it was running around in the bushes and that. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe, give it a thumbs up. If you click the little bell icon, then you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Hope you enjoyed and thanks.